Welcome back to the Greenville Chamber's Growing a Greater Greenville podcast. We're kicking off this year with a Greater Together series on the partnerships that shape Greenville. I'm your host, Carlos Phillips. Today, I'm happy to sit down with our guest, Eric Weissman, who's the executive director of Next. Welcome to the show, Eric. Thanks, Carlos. Pleasure to be here. Man, we're so happy that you're here with us today. Uh, Now, before we jump in, I want to take a moment to thank our sponsors uh, for today's episode. Blue Cross Blue Shield of South Carolina, First National Bank, and Acumen IT. Thank you uh, to these sponsors. All right, Eric, you ready to get started? Ready. Good deal. Uh, Before we get too deep into the, the questions today, please share a little bit about yourself with the audience. Uh, again, thank you for having me on as a as a host, and thank you for for really welcoming me to Greenville. Been here for a little over two years. Um, came by way of Cincinnati. Um, I uh, did similar work, and we'll get into to some of what what Next does. But I did similar work in in Cincinnati, and and prior to that, I I had a a marketing career. I worked for Fifth Third Bank, uh, headquartered in Cincinnati. They have about eighteen different affiliate banks throughout the Southeast and the Midwest. And before that, I worked for the Walt Disney Company uh, with Disney Cruise Line Marketing. Kind of fell into uh, my career path, took me uh, down the line of small business, uh, some some venture-backed startups, and now into economic development and startup support. So a pleasure to be here. And and again, um, thanks for having me on. Well, again, it's a pleasure to have you here, Eric. Cincinnati's loss has certainly certainly been Greenville's gain. Uh, we're, uh, we're We're glad that you're here. Um, so for our listeners who are unfamiliar with the work of Next, tell us a little bit about the organization and how you're supporting our region's entrepreneurs. Sure. Uh, so at its core, Next is an entrepreneur support organization, or ESO. That's kind of the, the acronym there. Uh, we are part of the economic development strategy of the chamber, uh, Greenville City and Greenville County. Those are our three financial backers. Um, the way that I look at it is that, you know, economic development is varied and, and you need to have a lot of different parts and pieces to your strategy. One component of that needs to be focused on innovation and entrepreneurship. And that's what we focus on high growth entrepreneurs and their teams, really keeping them moving forward to the next lily pad, as I like to say, in their journey. Further define high growth, uh, because there are a lot of different types of entrepreneurs uh, in, in our community, but specifically we define high growth. Yeah, it's a good question, and 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 a lot of buzzwords. And and if I if I use too much jargon, please stop me and rewind the tape and and, and go back and say to, to to explain what that is. I'm very comfortable with doing that because we can slip into that that lingo sometimes. But uh, one of the challenges in in entrepreneur support um, is that in, in in some ecosystems, being an entrepreneur is code word for can't hold a job. Right? I'm an entrepreneur. And, and, and we're not saying that we're not, we're not, we're not trying to demean that or, or, or there's a serial entrepreneur nature that somebody just can't keep themselves from starting businesses or having these ideas. When we refer to high growth entrepreneurs, that's in contrast to a lifestyle business. And the lifestyle business is something that supports the lifestyle of that founder. Nothing wrong with that. No, no, nothing, nothing, uh, to be, um, you know, to diminish their, their importance and their role. I forget what the exact stat is, but um, there is a, a, a high percentage of people that are employed in the United States. I think it's over 80% of them work for a small business with three or fewer employees. It's a lot of people that are out there for, that, that work for entrepreneurs. But when we talk about high growth, the, those, those types of companies are on a, a pretty quick trajectory to scale. Would you hire another person? So that's one of the questions we we tend to ask when we talk about uh, the companies that 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 we focus our our support around, our direct support around. At next, is this does this go beyond the Carlos and Eric show? Right? Would would you would you hire another person? Would you open up another facility? Would you would you offer another um, another you know stock keeping unit, another SKU? Would you would you would you want to scale this thing? So when we talk about, about high growth entrepreneurs, it, it tends to lean to scale, which then tends to lead to investability. Would anybody else put their money in this? We want to create wealth and not just wealth for the owner, right? Wealth for an investor, uh, wealth for the employees. We're talking about knowledge-based jobs. 
That's another jargon filled term. But when we're talking about high growth entrepreneurs, those lead to scale, those lead to creating wealth, and those also lead to um, a greater regional ambition. Uh, so those, those are some of the factors that we look at when we talk about high growth. And just, just real quickly to kind of finish this or put a cap on it, a lot of those high growth companies are tech companies. However, those aren't the only companies that we work with at Next. Yes, tech companies can scale and they can create wealth and they create jobs, et cetera, et cetera. And there's regional ambition. Um, but what I found in my experience of doing this for the better part of a decade, um, when you focus only on tech, you're leaving out a, a giant swath of the ecosystem. And that's not uh, completely representative. Um, that's not to say that Next is the only one that's carrying the baton here. We'll go over what that, what that ecosystem looks like. But really from a focus uh, standpoint, we want to focus uh, around um, high growth entrepreneurs and their team. Blue Cross Blue Shield of South Carolina is a longtime partner of the Greenville Chamber and offers a wide range of health plans and options designed just for Chamber members. Companies with 51 or more employees have access to Chamber Blue, Blue Cross's exclusive portfolio of more than 40 unique health plans, with enhanced office visit co-pays, access to innovative apps, and more. Blue Cross is the only South Carolina health insurance carrier serving its citizens for more than 75 years. For information about our health plans for chamber members, call the Greenville Chamber at 864-239-3723. Next was born um, out of a partnership um, with the chamber uh, over 15 years ago. Uh, so almost two decades uh, of, this, uh, of this partnership. Um, let's talk a little bit about the history of how, of how Next was formed. Yeah. The once upon a time, as I call it, our, our origin story, you know, like, like it seems so long ago. <laughs> well, to me, it was, you know, uh, you know, the, the, were it not for that, that strong foundation, I don't think this would have been what well, we won. We wouldn't have had the success that we're having currently as a, as a region, as an ecosystem. Um, but also were it not for those pioneers that, um, that really established us and gave us this strong foundation. Uh, would we be in a position where we're in right now? I'll just add that uh, Next predates both of us um, in our respective in our respective roles. Um, but I think one of the one of the factors that influenced the creation of Next was the, the need to be the realization that we need to be intentional about growing our our high growth entrepreneurial. Uh, yeah, ecosystem. We the, the, we we had to be focused focused on that, and, and that was next. That was the uh, the purpose of, of of the formation of next. Yeah, a group of entrepreneurs um, of these high growth entrepreneurs uh, kind of banded themselves together and, and tugged on the shirt sleeve, if you will, of the chamber and said, "Hey, we're we're happy to be a part of the chamber, but we don't feel like you're talking to us." We're never going to be at the same level as Michelin or, or United Community Bank, but, but we have needs and, and we would like to talk to each other. So, so I believe it was an inspirational trip to Charleston. Um, you know, the, the chamber and I was on a, a, a similar trip to Nashville uh, earlier this year um, to do some fact finding, to do some searching and to do some, some, some inspiration, to find some inspiration was on one of those trips. Um, that this group visited the Charleston Digital Tech Corridor, Charleston Tech Corridor, something. Um, I'm missing the the acronym there, but um, and it was written on the back of a napkin by a guy named Jeff Pappenfuse and said, "Why aren't we doing this in Greenville? Or why not Greenville? Something along those lines." And uh, yada yada yada. Uh, Next was formed to address that. Our original manifestation is still on the corner of University Ridge and Church uh, building, Next Innovation Center, because space was one of the first things that needed to be accomplished. In the traditional definition of, of economic development, of what that looks like from, a, from an incentive standpoint, um, many states focus on, on real estate, and capital, capital uh, formation of, of real estate, as well as jobs, job creation and capital formation. So that looks like a call center, right? Or a plant uh, or a manufacturing facility. But here come these, these successful entrepreneurs who, who don't have 50,000 square feet between them, right? They're not looking for 50,000 square feet. And they weren't looking for five-year or 15-year leases. They were looking for 500 square feet or, or a month-to-month -month lease. 
Uh, so Bob Hughes, Hughes Development, uh, kind of had this um, this building was on his radar as well. And uh, through that partnership, through the chamber and through this group, um, that's where Next planted its flag. I, I fully expect that in the next, you know, 10 to 15 years, we're going to get one of those plaques like South Carolina history, and it will say here on this date, no, something. But but that's the that's the once upon a time, and uh, we'll go, hopefully go through a lot of how we've evolved. Um, I, I'm proud of what we've been able to do in the last um, two years uh, that, that I've been here, but but also just the evolution of how it started, uh, how's it going, and what's what's coming up. The term for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs uh, comes to mind when I think about when I think about next. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah. And that's that's how um, a lot of these ecosystem uh, groups are formed. Be- they, they have to have a founder at the center or at the very least have to have the founder's motivations uh, central to to what's what's pushing people forward. Um, you see it in Austin, you see it in Boulder, where these, um, these organizations were built around a successful entrepreneur or three who have had some success, who want to bring other people along with them. And then that just feeds on itself in, in this cycle. So the buy entrepreneurs for entrepreneurs, um, is definitely a strategy. And I would say definitely, um, something to keep in mind because it needs to be these ecosystem building exercises need to be organic. Um, you can't bioengineer everything, but you can take a shot of adrenaline in the heart and, 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 and really uh, put the jumper cables on it and, you know, wake the patient up on the table and, you know, rub the packs together and, and, uh, and, and wake things up. But, uh, but there, there's no, you, you can't circumvent that by entrepreneurs for entrepreneurs uh, as part of that origin. Good deal. And before we go much further, I, I want to take a moment to just uh, recognize uh, John Moore um, as he was the original um, executive director of the Next uh, Initiative and really helped not only to launch it, but to uh, build it. Uh, and then uh, when he stepped away, uh, we we were thankful that your, uh, for your interest um, in taking the helm and taking next to its proverbial next level, uh, uh, if you will. So let's let's talk about that for just a moment. Uh, you know, while we while we recognize and we can talk about how the partnership has positively impacted the community, I think most of the uh, folks uh, uh, viewing this will want to know what. What does the what 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 is the next iteration uh, yeah. uh, of w- next? What does it? Sure. What, what do you think it looks like? And what does next do? I think let, let I'll start off by kind of answering where we're at, and then also you know where the the director because it's an evolution, right? It's not it's not going to be something where we're static and 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 conditions change. We are very fortunate in in Greenville to be um, on the, the the beneficiary of. A dramatic influx of people on an annual basis. I believe it's twenty thousand ish, twenty thousand people. Uh, We're expecting in, in Greenville County an additional quarter of a million uh, folks over the next twenty years or so. So it's pretty explosive growth. So it's like twenty thousand a year. I, I remember um, previous my, my previous experience. We would celebrate when the when the growth wasn't negative. You know, when we were just, you know, keeping our nose above water, here we've got 20,000 people that are coming in. You know, another thing to keep in mind is that, that Greenville is on, I, I say we're on an embarrassingly amount of lists. We're on, we're on the Southern Living's, you know, best uh, downtown for Christmas, the uh, best waterfall, that, uh, and the, the Heath Dillard best and the team over at uh, Beth Motes and the, and the team at, at Visit Greenville has done a fantastic job. Of of creating that and, and keeping that yeah that that Greenville momentum going, but we don't want to be just a Thursday through Sunday town, right? We want to be a Sunday through Sunday town. We want people to find places to work to find that that fulfillment. So having a startup ecosystem as a component of of your economic development strategies is is critical. Um, so when I talk about next and, and kind of what we do, um, I, I bundle it into really three categories. One, 
we steward the broader entrepreneurial ecosystem, that which we've given the code name or, or kind of a nickname of hashtag startup Greenville. So it's our job to kind of keep keep tabs on what all is happening. We'll go over that in a second if we if we um, get the chance to. I would appreciate that to kind of talk about all the components of of stewarding the broader entrepreneurial league ecosystem. The second thing we do is identify, support, and engage with high growth entrepreneurs and their team through our program services and events. That's the that's the meat. That's our bread and butter. But you can't get away from being a part of the ecosystem, we need to focus on a certain subset of that ecosystem that we have a reason to believe or we have a right to win in that, in that column. And then the third thing we do is measure the impact. We're taking the pulse. We, we like to be, I, I call it the Fitbit of the ecosystem. Is any of this working? If so, what? If there's things that aren't working, where do we need to prune? Where do we need to fertilize? Where do we need to, to, to throw some effort? Where are the gaps? Where are the overlaps? Um, and, and how are we keeping tab on our overall effectiveness? So those are the three things that, that next does. Good. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so well, next is a, certainly a valuable player in developing and supporting Greenville's entrepreneurial ecosystem. Uh, you're not the only player, uh, in town, not the only resource, um, in, in town, uh, for entrepreneurs, for example, the Greenville Chamber. Uh, also supports uh, a minority business accelerator, uh, which is but um, another resource in our community for entrepreneurs. Now, you did something pretty, something pretty fascinating when you first uh, arrived uh, to town. Um, you're, you're quite the artist as well, um, Eric, and, and you created uh, an entrepreneurial ecosystem uh, map to, to reflect the various organizations in town uh, that that support uh, entrepreneurs, and I'm not sure I'm not sure most folks understand just how vast um, that that uh, uh, entrepreneurial support ecosystem is. Yeah, a resource map, um, and and that's something that that I found is important to visualize and to give everybody a visual touch point for all the stuff that's going on here. So you can go to Startup Greenville or StartupGVL.com, go to resources, and you can download this map that I'm going to describe here. But there are over 66 different nodes on that map. 66? All the way from 66 different nodes on that map. Uh, the chamber, you know, the, the, the chamber's MBA program, SBDC, the platform at Greer, uh, the Hill Institute at Furman, uh, Clemson. You know, I, will, I will inevitably leave people off because I can't go through 66 of those. But it goes from imagining all the way over to growth resources. You kind of follow your way along that path. The point in that is to make it pretty so that you can see at a glance all the stuff that's going on. And then you see the interconnectivity through these nodes. Now, the path is not linear. You don't go from one to 66. And I'm, in touch. I'm not an entrepreneur until I've hit all of these. No, no, it's nonlinear. You're going to bounce back and forth to about seven or nine, sometimes 10 different touch points. Uh, there are no wrong front doors to the ecosystem. So once you come into the ecosystem, congratulations, you're in. That's, that, that's the importance of, of putting a brand around it, of putting a, a, a name that's, that's all encompassing and intended to be inclusively generic, if that, if that makes sense. Um, the ecosystem really can't be owned by any person. There can be gardeners that tend it and, and, and people in next plays that role of being maybe the, the, the leadership voice. But, um, there's whole studies that have been done around, around ecosystem building around this systems engineering or systems thinking, um, that's pertinent to, to ecosystem development. And what that means is there's a codependency and you can't have an ecosystem that is just university driven or just manufacturing driven or or just venture back driven uh that's not an ecosystem just like in in nature ecosystems like a rainforest right it, uh, rainforest isn't all just tall trees uh there's a lot of stuff in between there there's rocks and ferns and 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 rivers and and things like that that that, that have that 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 codependency so mapping that ecosystem out was important because one, we wanted to do an assessment of what do we have here? What, 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 what does it look like? Um, secondly, we wanted to see where the obvious gaps are 
And one of the gaps that we see is you can see that that ecosystem map is on our our early stage capital. We've got some, don't 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 get me wrong, but we don't have enough. And that's something that we should be paying attention to. Why don't we have some of that early stage capital? Um, is it uh, a problem of awareness that they just don't know what, what's happening here? Is it a problem from, from our, our founders don't know or they're, 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 they're kind of blind to risk capital? So that's what an ecosystem builder does is does that assessment. But the first thing we have to do is, is get, a, get an understanding of, of how that looks and, and what that looks like. Other ecosystems, you know, there, there's uh, spreadsheets and, and, and other non, uh, non-pretty ways to describe that. But what I found is that once you make that um, that that visual, and it is kind of my one of my calling cards that um, and I'm fortunate enough to be uh, to to present on economic development panels and that uh, and along with the chamber on, on when we have visiting people come in and and talk about you know what what all makes Greenville great. Um, when I show that map, you know it's it's um, it's jaw dropping and uh, what it's fun. Because um, you know it's all here, and now on a monthly basis. So one, the first part of identifying that map, but now on a monthly basis, we get that map together, um, and we have. Oh, it varies, you know, from attendance standpoint. I think sometimes there's, I think the most we've ever had was like 22 people from 18 different organizations um, that come in and and. I give them, you know, go around the table and about three to four minutes, tell us every, tell everybody what you did last month and what went well, where'd you get stuck? How could we help? Um, but it really is that communication that is so simple in explanation, but very challenging in the execution. Um, but the first part was to just start with, hey, we're all on the same map. When I look at that map and over 60 entrepreneurial support organizations uh, and resources, Noted, uh, it appears that Greenville's uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem is is pretty robust. I'm curious as to how that, how our ecosystem compares to other similar size or p- peer or even aspirational communities. Well, that's a great question, and and one of the things that um, that we need to keep in mind is, um, you know, our relative size as a city, as well as a state, and as well as a region. Um, when you look at and maybe stack rank ecosystem rankings, California, Silicon Valley, San Francisco is literally off the chart. Like they, they, there needs to be another chart for them and then everybody else comes in. So um, not, not that we want to be the next Silicon Valley, I'm not saying that, but just from comparison sake, it's, it's tough to compare those. So I do like to look at peer cities. And I do like to look at how long have we been at it and what's the temperature? What's the temperature from, um, from a, a state or a regional uh, standpoint of is this type of business building encouraged or are they uh, pushed to the side? Are they, are they welcomed in these conversations? And if you go to a coffee shop or a brewery or, or if you're at a, a, a baseball game at the drive and, and you overhear somebody that says, um, you know, I'm on my seventh startup. What's the reaction to that phrase? If that reaction is seven, well, maybe, what'd you do? The, what'd you do wrong the first six times? Or is it awesome? Yeah. What? Tell me what? The, tell me what? Like that in and of itself is 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 very telling for an ecosystem that that thrives on that innovation. So you want to look at that. You want to look at those those types of 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 intangible or, or unstructured uh, component, unstructured data components. There are plenty of structured components, right? There are plenty of, of lists that the U.S. Census Bureau can provide you of companies, of, of towns that have companies of five years and under. Um, that's a good, good health sign. The Kauffman Foundation provides uh, indexes and resources like that. So you can, you can take a look at those, um, those empirical or those, you know, those structured components. But I would say that, you know, here in the state of South Carolina, we're doing very good. Um, the, there's, you know, three major uh, metropolitan areas, Charleston, Columbia, and Greenville. Um, you know, I would say, and I am pandering to the crowd here just a little bit, but, um, you know, we're doing very well. I'll just leave it at that from, from, from those components. Um, we are buttressed by uh, 
Atlanta and uh, Charlotte, which is on the gateway to the Research Triangle Park, uh, which is one of the better entrepreneurial ecosystems, I would say, in the world. Um, so that that's that's good. And I think it's good that, that, that we are kind of in between those, those two uh, metropolitan areas for a number of reasons. One, that's kind of preventing us from growing that much. You know, we're not, I don't think we're going to be the next Charlotte. We just can't. It's the, it, we're, we're sandwiched in there. But it's also a, a, a good outlet for people that don't want to put up with the traffic or the commotion that is going on in Atlanta. And we're an hour and a half to two hours away, depending on you know what, what outskirts you're on. So there's definitely an advantage. Um, but some of the things that we do need to uh, really pay attention to are those metrics that these other ecosystems are, are touting and comparing themselves to, and therefore then attracting the right type of companies that bring in the investors, that bring in the talent. Um, we, we can't just um, uh, ignore uh, some of those signs and say, well, we don't want to be in that game. We don't want to be in that game. Um, and and yeah, I think that that uh, we're not. So so I'm not I'm not I'm not uh, uh, presaging anything there. But um, I do think that that um, now that we can realize that attracting these types of entrepreneurs and their team is an effective strategy. Um, it's up to us to harness that. Let's turn a trip to the branch into a tap on your phone. Let's hit pause on a lost debit card without hitting pause on life. That's how First National Bank is redefining convenience with a top rated mobile app that puts more security and control at your fingertips and friendly people to help you succeed right by your side. Let's get started at fnb-online.com or your local First National Bank branch. FNB member FDIC. Just have a couple of more uh, questions for you as we uh, wrap up today's um, episode. Uh, please uh, tell our um, listeners, tell our audience how entrepreneurs can get involved with with Next. Great, great question. Um, it, it it's really a network. And, and, and this network is not going to be just like any professional, your own network. You, you can't have a only transactional attitude about that, that network. Um, the best ecosystems are built on a give first mentality. What happens when I show up and, and who knows why I could be able to pull along with me along that, that journey. So our core customer, let's not get away from that is founded. But what if, what if I'm not a founder right now? What if I want to work for a founder? How do I get involved and engaged? And, and so those, uh, those events that we run, um, on a, sometimes a community basis, sometimes a, we have signature events that we do only twice a year. Um, that, that I call them the bang the trash can. You know, we're, we're, we're drawing people out of the woodwork. So if you're a founder or want to be a founder, you're a part of our network. But what if you're a mentor? Right. What if you've been through this before and you want to help and you want to you want to um, you want to give back in that way? We want you as part of this mix as well. Um, what if you're a future founder? Like you don't want to you don't you don't think this is what you want to do immediately, but at some point. So the first step would be to sign up for our newsletter. That, that's 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 really the, the instant first step. And that gets you dialed into our propaganda channel. There should be a button at the top of our um, um, uh, website. It is very clear on 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 how to join up, um, and then if you've got uh, if you've got an entrepreneurial bent or if you want to be in that, there's a, a second subset there. We want to talk to you in a little bit different way to talk about the programs that we have coming up, whether it's our accelerator or uh, our growth labs or workshop or a mentor program that you can get involved in. But let's do some filtering and sorting first to make sure that we 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 bring you the the best experience possible. And then on the flip side of that, like I said about mentors or being teachers or being subject matter experts or being service providers to that field, we need to do some sorting there too of uh, what type of help can you provide? What type of experience do you have? And then we want to match those things all together. And, uh, and then at the end of the, the, the experience um, uh, to tell you and, and keep track of, of what's working and what's not. 
but this is not a this is not a quick path the 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 phrase that i like to reference and, and this is common right is is when's the best time to plant a tree 20 years ago um but the second best time is today and i think that you know we can just visualize right outside on on main street in greenville is lined with trees that didn't come here two years ago those trees were planted 30 some years ago and now we're all bearing the fruits of that there's you know string lights and this weekend was a you know christmas parade it was it was fantastic um so we are going to be able to see the benefits of this to see if this is working in 20 years from now however just like running a marathon, if I want to run a marathon, I don't just go out tomorrow and run 26.2 miles, right? I'm going to train for it. I'm going to get me some milestones. I'm going to get some training programs. And I'm going to know by the time I hit that eight mile run, whether I'm going to be able to make it or not. So there are milestones that we can hit along those ways. And Eric, those trees didn't just plant themselves. There was a heightened intentionality and in planting those trees and entrepreneurial ecosystems don't just happen. Um, you have to be intentional uh, about developing uh, those, and Nexus playing a certainly playing a key role in that. We're going to wrap this up, but uh, in closing, what advice do you have for other organizations looking to create their own transformational partnerships? So, so you know, the another common phrase is, you know, it's amazing what gets done when no one takes credit or when, when, when that isn't part of, of saying, but I did this or I did. And I think that when we look at ecosystem building and we look at entrepreneurial ecosystem building, it's going to take a lot of hands. And, and I think there's enough bread to go around um, that we can find, people can find successful components of that, uh, of, of being involved in that way. Um, Back in, in, in Cincinnati, the organization that I worked for and part of the founding team of uh, called Centrifuge, uh, we were started by the big businesses that call Cincinnati home, Procter & Gamble, Kroger, Children's Hospital, et cetera, um, who wanted to find a way for the region to grow and remain relevant without depending only on them. And it was that type of magnanimous uh, collaborative mindset that 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 successful towns follow to say we all have a, a something to benefit from something to give from uh you know component that, that that we can contribute to this um but there there needs to be that collaborative mindset and um you know you never know where that where that one uh home run is going to come from um but meaning I don't know what what um, what variable is at play that caused this thing. Is it because there were trees and and I could I could find talent really easily because they they loved that there was there was some balance to their life? Is it the fact that we're an hour away from the mountains, three hours away from the beach? Is it a matter of the fine dining scene? Is it a matter of the 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 quality of our K through 12 education? Is it a matter of the diversity initiatives that the chamber is championing that I, I feel like I'm included no matter at what stage? It could be all of that stuff. Um, but I think that the, I know that the better ecosystem, um, have that collaborative mindset and, and, and truly do believe that we will go far only if we go together. Excellent words to close on, Eric. Um, again, I want to thank you for, uh, joining me today. Uh, for on our growing a greater Greenville uh, podcast, and before I let you go, I told you I wasn't going to do this, but I've changed my mind. Uh, knowing your knowing your Cincinnati your Cincinnati uh, roots and what have you, I gotta I gotta ask you, Skyline or Gold Star? <laughs> That's easy. It's Skyline. There there is there is no no doubt. And if you don't know, they have Skyline at Harris Theater. You can get it. I, I am a frequent buyer. Yeah, that, but. but it's not it's not as fresh as it is when you when you go there. So my my college roommate uh, was from uh, uh, an area just outside of Cincinnati. He never missed an opportunity to to savor Scalini, as he called it, or or Skyline, as it is uh, formerly. So thank you for sharing your perspectives uh, today, uh, Eric. No problem. My All problem. Right. Um, also, I want to. Thank our generous uh, podcast sponsors uh, again. I want to thank Blue Cross Blue Shield of South Carolina, First National Bank, and Acumen IT. And finally, 
I want to thank our audience. I want to thank you for joining us and for helping us in our efforts to grow a greater Greenville.